Bite my shiny metal. Hey, how's it going, art nerds? It's your boy, Didi Mark. I bet you were expecting me to say some dumb name like Didi Douchebag or something. <laughs> well, ha, I gotcha, didn't I? Hashtag Didi Yagami with the mind games, am I right? <coughs> okay. Why can't I just ever start a video normally, bruh? Um, but anyways, uh, in this video, I felt it necessary to cover something quite important considering I'm a channel that, you know, among other things, teaches people how to draw, you know, specifically in the anime style and even more specifically in the manga style. You know, so what am I talking about? Well, young Padawan, I'm talking about how to find and come up with your art style. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about manga art style, but if you're not a manga artist or someone who is even interested in the manga style, this video still applies to you. You know, a lot of the concepts I cover and the content within the video apply to whatever art style you have in mind or I guess whatever art style genre or whatever, you know. By the way, I don't know what y'all heard, but it seems like a lot of people think an art style is something you innately develop just by breathing, eating, and taking shits. Or, you know, it's something within your DNA that you have to force to come out or something. No. Uh, an art style is something you methodically put together of your own volition and with a certain amount of thought put into it. But, you know, anyways, that aside, let's get this juicy video topic clapping, baby. I don't, I don't even know what, I don't even know what that meant, but whatever. <clears throat> Okay, so art styles, or finding an art style. I want to cover this by summing it up into four tips. More like four sections or phases, you know, but for the sake of kissing the beautiful ass cheeks of the YouTube algorithm, let's just call it tips, okay? Pause. Uh, so first and foremost, in a talk about finding art style, let's talk realism. <laughs> Okay, nerds, now I know a lot of you don't want to hear this, but if you want to know how to stylize, maybe I suggest learning how to realistically or at least somewhat realistically depict something before you stylistically try to interpret it. Now I know there's been a lot of talks and backlash of people who say learn realism before you learn to stylize and stuff, and you know for the most part I'm on the side of the argument that says you don't need to know how to draw realistically uh, to stylize, but I'd be lying if I said you didn't need a proper foundation, in my opinion at least. Now I don't think you need to pull out some ultra mega realistic figure drawings, N no. I'm just saying from my observation and personal studies, every stylized artist can draw realistically, at least to an extent. Like even Disney artists that stylize animals and stuff can draw those same animals in hyper-realistic detail. For example, you know that guy Sam does art on Instagram? You see his you see his really cool stylized art? If you scroll down a couple on his page, boom, realistic. You know that guy White Manga? Yeah, look at his cool stylized art, boom, realistic. What about TB Choi? Stylized, realistic. Ethan Becker? Stylized, realistic. And yeah, well, you get the picture. To build a house, you need to have a good, strong foundation. And so to summarize this tip, basically, about realism, is to get a strong grasp on the drawing fundamentals and figure drawings and stuff. And this will make everything we talk about moving forward easier to do, in my opinion. Or, you know, whatever. Okay, now that you have a rock-hard foundation... <laughs> Not that you have a, I'm a dumbass. Not that you have a rock hard foundation on which you can rely on in this journey of creating an art style. We can move on to the next tip, which is something I call the backbone phase. Okay, so backbone phase. Some of you might be thinking, "Whoa, what a cool sounding name!" And then another bunch of you are probably thinking, "Backbone phase? What a stupid ass name!" And to both of you, I say, "Yes, I know." So yeah, backbone phase. I really couldn't pick a better name for this tip, but you know, whatever. My point is that after you have a good foundation or after you've had a good foundation, like I said earlier, you now want to figure out what your art style is and basically what you would want it to be. You know, like for a lack of better words, you need to figure out the genre your art style is or what you would like it to be. And this section is very important because this will affect all the phases we'll cover going forward. But yeah, deciding your genre you would like your art style to be. Let me give you an example. When I was doing this myself, I wanted a semi-realistic manga art style with a blend of seinen and shonen. So you could say the genre of the art style that I wanted was shonen or seinen manga art. Uh, if you wanted to draw like horror paintings, your genre would be, well I guess they'd be horror paintings. And if you wanted to do horror drawings and not paintings, your genre would be horror drawing, maybe horror manga art, you know? 
uh but uh, an example of rapid fire genres to me are like i don't know horror manga art horror painting art uh shonen manga art seinen manga art pinterest cute girl paintings cute girl drawings chibi art style cartoony western cartoony eastern and blah 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 you get it i hope now this may all sound you know like stupidly vague but the point is to have an image or an idea in your head of what you want your style to look like and the feel you want it to have or the vibe or the mood you want it to have and etc does that make sense because if it doesn't then that's a l for you buddy you gotta go back and rewatch what i just said in a slower speed and if it does make sense great let's move on because with this information we are going into the nfl slash nba draft phase nfl or nba drafting what the hell is this dd mark youtube or is this espn i know i know i probably could have come up with a better name for this tip but bear with me and see where i'm coming from so basically like they do in the drafts for sports teams you my art nerds will basically be drafting artists <gasps> drafting artists for what did he mark well drafting artists to fit the mood vibe or genre you have in your head of what your art style would look like from what i asked you to do in the last tip so basically you're drafting slash picking artists that sort of check the marks of what you would like in your own style you know for a beginner i recommend picking three artists so for me remember i said i wanted to blend seinen's art style with shonen and make something unique well i remember i chose masashi kishimoto yusuke murata and gege akutami so like if you wanted i don't know for example an art style for a horror manga you're making and you need that type of art style you'd maybe choose a junji ito or, or a sutomu nihei hope i pronounced that right and maybe a scott m fisher you know i know him from uh, comic he did for dark horse i forget the name of it but it's up on the screen somewhere but you see what i mean you do research of artists you see who do something well or something you admire within that genre i had you pick from the previous tip and then what do you do with them well like a scumbag piece of shit, you copy the fuck out of their work okay this is gonna sound bad but this next phase or tip is to copy your fucking ass off. And don't get me wrong, it's not a bad thing. I said it with a tone that might make it sound like a bad thing, but it isn't, you know? Basically, every great artist steals, so it's okay, I promise. Um, <laughs> every artist you love has definitely stolen from someone else. It's fine. So how do you steal from these artists you've drafted? Well, you take the three artists and do a mishmash Dr. Frankenstein type shit and blend those three styles in whatever way you like to make something unique. Keeping the theme of using my own personal experience as an example, I remember that I took the proportions of Masashi Kishimoto's characters and blended it with the way Yusuke Murata draws faces and tones manga and then I matched those two with the way Gege Akutami draws hands and the way he inks. And that's how my style was made, at least the, the first version of my style was made. And the thing is, nothing is truly original. Something was taken from something else. Uh, but you want to know something that is original, my lovely viewers? It's your taste. Nice. Your personal taste or preferences is what's original. So using that taste to pick artists to mash together will create something unique. And just like that, four tips or phases in creating and coming up with an art style. You know, it goes without saying that when I say copy, I didn't mean it that way. And you know the way I'm talking about don't just take someone else's work and just straight up copy it or trace it please don't do that copy multiple artists and make something unique by blending different elements of their art together which reminds me you want to have way more than three influences on your art style by the way um i only said three like kind of like to start off for beginners uh but yeah after you've mashed the three original then go ahead and like keep studying more artists uh, you like who fit your mood or genre to keep improving and updating your style like for example since i personally studied murata kishimoto and akutami as my og3 i've studied and i've had my art style influenced by about like 20 more artists uh, you know off the top of my head i've studied boichi sam does arts ethan becker horikoshi kohei jim lee white manga tai kubo third php tatsuki fujimoto and so much more so yeah study and steal from as many artists as you want you know the more the better uh but yeah thank you very much for watching this video it truly means a lot to me if you enjoyed the video please make sure to leave a like and subscribe because i upload videos weekly 
Also, turn on the notification bell to be notified when I upload said videos. And yeah, make sure to leave a comment because I respond to any and all comments. Besides, I'm kind of curious to see who you guys' biggest artistic influences or biggest influences to your art style are. So, you know, just let me let me know in the comment section. I'm, I, I want to see that. Anyways, you know, till next time, DD Deuces, DD Art Nerd.